The first guy crazy enough to try flying in anything electric was a French dude, like 140 years ago. The main problem back then? Batteries weren't exactly long-lasting or powerful. Apple, Tesla, Samsung, modern batteries last ages. Well, not really. Even the biggest electric car battery couldn't keep a plane in the air, not for long anyway. Right now, one pound of airplane fuel has almost 60 times more energy than a regular battery. They would need to make the fuel tank 60 times bigger and fill it with batteries. But batteries are heavy, so you'd need to make the electric airplane more powerful to handle the weight. So then, you'd need even more batteries, which would mean more weight. So you'd need to make an even stronger… Uh, you get the picture. But engineers are trying to find a balance. In 1973, two of them put an electric engine on a glider, and it flew for 14 minutes. Not really long enough to fly anywhere, but it was still the first manned electric aircraft flight ever. A few years later, one stayed in the air for 35 minutes. Its electric engine had only 3.5 horsepower, and its battery was borrowed from a Hughes 500 helicopter. The roof of the airplane had solar panels on it. But how much charge are you going to get in 35 minutes? Things are a lot easier when you're talking about pilotless planes. Mostly, they're just way lighter. No human, no chair, no doors or extra windows. Zippo. NASA's Pathfinder set a world record for an altitude of 71,000 feet. No jet engines, no fuel, just a pretty strong battery. In 1990, the Sunseeker 1 crossed the entire United States with an electric engine. It took 21 flights and 121 hours in the air. Most normal commercial planes do it in one go, and it only takes about 5 hours. After that, tech started getting way better. Time for the Solar Impulse. What a great name for a van! The wingspan of this giant was about the same as the Airbus A380, the largest passenger aircraft in the world. But its total weight was basically the same as an SUV. They put massive wings on it and loaded them up with solar panels. This time they really did recharge the plane as it flew around. It could stay in the air for an incredibly long time and travel huge distances. As part of its round-the-world trip, it spent almost five days in the air and traveled over 4,000 miles between Japan and Hawaii. Aloha! Why did it take five days? Because that thing only goes 45 miles per hour. That's like your grandma driving on the highway. My grandma has a lead foot. And you can't just build a plane. First, you need to pass through a tough certification process. Every screw, nut, bolt, every inch of your new plane needs to be tested for safety. That takes years. So many dreamers have gone another way. They take an existing aircraft, throw away the old gas-burning engine, and switch it out for an electric one. Electric engines are much lighter and they take up less space. But those heavy batteries more than make up for it. These upgraded planes can take off, but can only fly short distances, which is amazing. Jet planes emit about 1 billion tons of CO2 a year. They're a major player in the pollution game. But half of all flights in the world are less than 500 miles long. It's one thing to get a giant plane in the air to travel from New York to Paris. But it's totally different if you only need to fly New York to DC or Seattle to Vancouver. They're only a few hundred miles, but they use some of the same planes. It's crazy. They literally take off, gain the right altitude, and immediately begin their descent. That's like driving to your own mailbox in a tank. Each hour in the air costs the airlines thousands and pumps a bunch of CO2 into the atmosphere. So let's do it. Step 1. Replace the fuel-munching planes with electric ones. It'll be cheaper for everyone, quieter, and cleaner. Done. Just one problem. Electric planes can only take one to two passengers at a time. That's the pilot and co-pilot. The way forward? Build an electric plane from scratch. Aviation Alice. It might just be the first fully electric commercial aircraft, carrying nine passengers and two crew members. It looks kind of like an overturned boat and has three propellers, two on the wings and one behind its V-shaped tail. As long as a school bus, as wide as a limo. Its secret? 
it's almost twice as light as a school bus. That helps the engines work less and means longer flights. It's made of composite materials, which is science talk for stuff that's not metal, basically what some boats are made of. And its batteries take up 60% of its weight. They're everywhere – in the wings, tail, beak, eyes, feathers… <laughs> just kidding. Alice has a max range of 650 miles. That's like LA to Vegas and back. And then back to Vegas one more time. Its cruising speed is only 275 miles per hour, much slower than fuel-powered planes. But the main advantage of Alice is money. One hour in the air costs the airline 200 bucks. That's way cheaper than even those tiny planes that millionaires use to fly to Cabo for the weekend. So what's aviation waiting for? Mostly, it needs infrastructure. But that might not be such a big problem. There are almost 20,000 airports in the USA. Most of them are unused because they're just too expensive to run or because no airline wanted to bother flying there anymore. But Alice is much cheaper to maintain and it makes a lot less noise. Imagine the airport of the future – small, stylish, quiet, and clean. Engineers want to charge Alice with mobile chargers, like an electric version of those gas trucks you see at the airport. For a one-hour flight, Alice needs to juice up for 30 minutes. That's actually not that bad. But imagine if you were going to take a 14-hour flight on that thing. You'd be waiting at the gate for 7 hours. Alice costs $800 less per hour than other planes. But the plane itself is pretty expensive. Try $4 million. Still, that's only a bit more than one of those private jets. Alice is getting ready for a 2022 fully certified flight. That means it's only a few years before regional flights go electric, at least some of them. But if electric planes want to play in the big leagues, they need to solve that same old problem – their batteries. Modern lithium-ion batteries have serious issues. They're flammable, they lose their charge faster and faster, the more you recharge them, and the cold makes them not work as well. The next generation of batteries is lithium sulfur batteries. They hold more power and are cleaner for the environment. But their main disadvantage is that they wear out quickly. So scientists are looking for other tech to step up. Hybrid planes might be the way of the future. That's what cars are doing more and more now – part fuel, part battery. Airplanes will probably be the same. There are already lightweight two-seater planes that use a hybrid engine. The aircraft takes off quietly with the energy stored in its batteries. Once it's up in the air, it changes to fuel. Some engines actually charge the battery while it's working, sort of like your car battery. Electric planes aren't the only way forward. Some companies are working on biofuel planes, which run on hydro-something-something veggie oil. But those planes are also pretty small. Probably the next big thing to hit the airline industry will be driverless planes. Computers already do a ton of the heavy lifting, and if you fly long distance, most of it's on autopilot already. Even though it's so freaky to think that there's no one up there flying your plane, most problems are caused by human error. So no human, no errors? Most customers say they don't like the idea, but that'll probably change soon enough. Ooh, I wonder if they're gonna make AI robot cabin crew. Or what if tiny drones flew around the cabin serving drinks? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.